Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how you can cut the time it takes to generate an image using Invoke AI 3.0 with Stable Diffusion SDXL 1.0 on an M1 MacBook Pro by half. I'd say that's a pretty awesome improvement. Now this is in comparison to the video I did about two weeks ago where I showed you how to install Stable Diffusion and just basically get up and running. And I got some good feedback from you guys. One of the things that you guys complained about was the speed at which it runs. It's pretty slow. So that's part of the trade-off, I guess, when it comes to using Stable Diffusion on a Mac. The M1 MacBook Pros are a couple of years old. You can't really use Stable Diffusion on a Mac that doesn't have a GPU. You can, I believe, but you're gonna have to set it to use the CPU, which makes it even slower. It's already slow enough on a Mac with a GPU. Having said that, I think it's still worth using it and having it on a Mac. I use it to generate images all the time and I'm quite happy with it. It's not gonna be as fast as if you have a subscription to Midjourney or if you use Google Colab to run SDXL or Stable Diffusion SDXL, but it's fast enough. I mean, a year ago, we weren't even able to do this. So keep that in mind, you know, when you're using this and it takes a minute or two to generate a picture. Now, there are are some things that you can do to speed things up a little bit. So with Stable Diffusion SDXL, there's two models involved. There's the base model and there's the refiner model. Now you don't have to use the refiner model, but it's there for a reason and it's there to help refine the images and make them better. So I do like to use it. Now what I found was that with Invoke AI, switching between the, the models, so after it loads the base model and it generates the number of steps to kind of get your image to a certain point, and then hands that off to the refiner model to finish it off, that switch between the base model and the refiner takes a long time. Now you can speed that up by having the appropriate settings in your invoke AI.yaml file. So I'm going to show you in this video how you can do that. There's not much you can do to speed up the actual processing time, but the model switching lag can be pretty much eliminated. And that was the major issue that I was having using it on the Mac. I'm okay with it taking a while to actually process the image, to actually create the image. What I didn't like was waiting for it to switch between models. You need to allow for a lot of memory for this to happen because the base model is quite large and so is the refiner model. And every time you generate an image, it has to switch between the base model to the refiner and then the next time you do another image, it has to go from the refiner back to the base model. That's the part that we can speed up and that's what I'm gonna show you how to do in this video. Invoke AI web UI up here and I've got uh, my shell open down here to where I've got Invoke AI installed. And of course I've got my SDXL model version 1.0 and the refiner in here. That's Stable Diffusion SDXL, the latest version. And uh, let's take a look here. So there's a file in here called invokeai.yaml, which contains configuration options for the setup of Invoke AI. I'm gonna increase the size of the terminal here, and I'm going to just go inside this file and take a quick look. So I've intentionally set my max cache size here to 10 gigabytes, and I have this max VRAM cache size set to zero. You should always set this to zero on a Mac because the GPU on a Mac does not have VRAM, so you shouldn't have this set. I don't know if there's any artifacts. I know I had some setting in here before, and I'm not sure if that was contributing to any weirdness with my Invoke Stable Diffusion setup, but in any case, it should be zero. So I've got this max cache size set to 10 intentionally because that's not enough to hold both the Stable Diffusion SDXL base model and the refiner in the cache. So that means that it's going to have to switch between the models every time you generate an image that uses both of those models. And that adds a lot of time. I have calculated that it adds about 50 to 55 seconds. So about a minute or so of time just switching between models for every image. And that obviously is a lot and increases the amount of time it takes to generate multiple images. So if we can fix that problem, then we're definitely going to speed up Stable Diffusion using Invoke AI. For now, I'm going to leave it at 10 so you can see how it operates when it doesn't have enough cache. So I'm going to exit out of here and I'm going to just kind of bring this down a bit so we can see the Stable Diffusion window here, the Invoke AI window, and I'm going to start Invoke AI. 
Okay. So I've been generating a whole bunch of these images of Havanese dogs, and I'm just going to stick to the prompt that does that. So this isn't intended to be a tutorial on how to generate nice images or how to prompt stable diffusion. It's just to show you how you can speed up stable diffusion a little bit by eliminating the load time that is involved when you don't have enough of a cache for Invoke AI to load the models. So right now I have that cache set to 10 gigabytes as I showed you guys. And so I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this and load the prompt that I used for these images here. Put fluffy, happy, brown, Havanese dog, smiling, running through flowers in a field, sunlit, nice bokeh. Bokeh is that kind of like background effect that you see here. And that's fine, that's good enough. Now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna leave this as one image to generate 50 steps. CFG scale 7.5, we're not gonna change any of that here, but we will choose the stable diffusion base model Stable Diffusion XL base model as the model. I'm going to change the scheduler to LMS Caras. And then the VAE, I'm going to choose SDXL 1.0 VAE fix. And then down here, we're going to say use the refiner. And we're going to select the refiner model of XL refiner 1.0. Leave the steps and the CFG scale the same. Set the scheduler to LMS Keras. And now what we're gonna do, so down here we can still see the terminal and when I click on invoke, you'll see it starting to load. I'm gonna time this. So I'm actually just gonna do that on my watch. You guys aren't gonna see that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on invoke as I'm timing this. So now what's happening down here is it's loading the base model okay so it takes some time to load the model and that's what we're trying to do is eliminate the amount of time it takes to switch between models but the first time you run it it will take some time to load the models all right so that took about 30 seconds just to load the model and now it's going through the steps for the model. So this is the base model going through the steps to generate the image per hour prompt. So as you can see, it took about 20 sec 26 seconds to generate the steps for the base model. And now it's loading the refiner. It took about 10 seconds or so to load the refiner. And Refiner has less steps. All right, it finished generating the image. Lo and behold, there we go. It's a pretty cute little image of a Havanese dog. And that took one minute and 24 seconds total. So that was the time it took to load the base model, plus the time it took to run the base model steps, plus the time it took to load the refiner model, plus the time it took to run the refiner model steps. It took one minute and 24 seconds, which is somewhat long. It will take longer if you increase the resolution. I'm using 512 by 512, and it'll take longer if you increase the number of steps that you run for the base model or the number of steps that you run for the refiner. So we're gonna just go ahead and leave this as a baseline, and I'm gonna go back to the terminal we're gonna exit out of this current running instance of Stable Diffusion, and I'm gonna edit that Invoke AI YAML file again. And we're gonna go down and change the cache size. Where is it here? To, this time I'm gonna change it to 20 gigabytes okay and again max vram cache size needs to be zero on a mac i'm going to go ahead and save this and now i'm going to restart invoke ai again all right let's get this down here again okay so we've restarted it and let's go ahead and reload the same prompt 
Let's select our model. Let's select our scheduler, which is again, LMS Keras and our VAE. And let's tell it that we want to use the refiner and pick the refiner model and set its scheduler to LMS Keras. So we're back to everything the way we were for the last image that we generated. I am going to go ahead and generate another image by clicking on invoke and I'm timing it here on my own watch, which you can't see. Okay, so just like the last time, it's gonna to need to load the base model. So it took about 30 seconds to load the base model. Okay, so finish the base model steps and now it's loading the refiner. Now, this is taking about the same amount of time as the last run where we had the cache size set to 10 gigabytes. And that's because I had to restart invoke. So the cache got cleared and it has to load the models again the first time around. So it took about a minute and 25 seconds to generate this image, which is about the same amount of time as it took when we had our cache size set to 10. Now this time we had our cache size set to 20. So you're probably wondering why it's taking the same amount of time. Well, again, it's because we had to reload the application. We had to re-initialize the application. So it had to load both the base model and the refiner model once. So now those models should be loaded in the 20 gigabytes of cache that we set. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this again. I'm gonna do another invoke and see how long it takes. So I'm timing that on my watch, which you can't see. I'm gonna do that right now. So theoretically, the base model should be loaded. And sure enough, it started executing the steps right away. There wasn't that 30 seconds of load time that it took for the first run. So finish those steps and it immediately went into the refiner steps. And it finished those steps. And it took a total of exactly 45 seconds per my stopwatch to generate the image. The last image took one minute and 25 seconds. And when I had it on 10 gigabytes of cache, it took again about a minute and 25 seconds. All right, so a minute and 25 seconds versus 45 seconds is a savings of 40 seconds. That's 40 seconds per image that you will save by setting your cache size to 20 gigabytes when using Stable Diffusion SDXL with the Refiner model. Now, granted, those numbers will change if you change the number of steps, perhaps if you change the scheduler or if you ch change the models. But if you are using Stable Diffusion SDXL with the Refiner model, then rest assured you're saving about 40 seconds of model load time when you're using it with Invoke AI for every image that you generate after the first one. So that's pretty good. And that's basically it. All right, so I don't profess to be an expert in all things Stable Diffusion and Invoke AI, but I'm definitely a huge fan and a user. And this setting that I have shared with you is essentially just one way I found to improve the performance. It's significant. For me, it brought the amount of time it takes to generate an image down from about a minute and 25, minute and 30 seconds to about 45 seconds. So that's like half the time. So if you're generating tons of images back to back, that's gonna save you a lot of time. Now, of course, there's probably other ways of improving the performance on an M1 Mac or an Apple Silicon MacBook Pro. I haven't found those yet. This is a pretty solid way to really kind of get rid of that annoying wait time. And I hope you find it useful. Please let me know if you have any questions, any comments in the comment section and like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Thank you.